Hey, Texas, handing out some old fashioned ass whoopings all season long. And guess what? Kansas was no different. We got a lot to cover today. Let's go ahead, let's jump right into it. I'm just gonna lead this off with, there were many people out there who thought that my prediction, my idea, my theory, that Quinn Ewers could have himself a 300 yard passing day and Jonathan Brooks could have him 150 to 200 on the ground was so crazy. 661 yards of total offense. Quinn Ewers, 25 of 35, 325 yards passing, one touchdown on the ground, seven rushes for 40 yards and two touchdowns with his legs. My man Quinn, the Jet Ewers, showing why he is the number one dual threat quarterback in America, baby. In all seriousness, an electric performance by Quinn Ewers. Like, like what I said, there were things in the Kansas defense that I just saw that were glaring weaknesses that I had seen them display time and time again in all four pre previous games this season. And they came to light that middle, the middle, the interior of that Kansas defense was soft as some pillow pals. I'm just gonna say what it is. And another thing, as the game wore on, we saw the depth that Texas had really start to wear on Kansas. That, that's all around, the depth all around that Texas had, offensively and defensively. It was just too much for Kansas to, to uh, deal with as the game wore on. We absolutely mauled Kansas's defensive front seven. I mean, it was, it was ridiculous. Jonathan Brooks, 21 carries for 218 yards. I told y'all, man. Jay Brooks, JB is special. He ain't Roshan, he ain't Bijan. No, they're not gonna be those guys, but he's got his own traits. The man is a freaking freight train. He's a tank. And then when he gets in the open field, deceptive speed. I've been watching him since high school, and this has been one of the things that I feel like has been really overlooked about JB since he was in high school. It was his speed. When he gets into the open field, he can outrun you. And between the tackles, the man is a monster. I know there's been a lot of comparisons. Like people have been asking, well, who does JB who does JB compare to? Is he Priest Holmes? Is he more Ricky-esque? Is he this? Is he that? Well, as far as and when you look at Texas running backs, maybe you you would say Priest Holmes if you want to go back that far. When I look at JB, the number one person that he reminds me of, his running style is so much like Derrick Henry. And I mean that in the in the way he runs the ball, the physicality, and then he's got that speed in the open field that, that you just don't expect bigger guys like him to have. He's six foot, he's over 200 pounds. Much like him, he's got that speed in the open field. When he gets that stride going, you don't catch him. He had the big 67 yarder, and then he had the 40 yarder, 50 yarder right up the middle um, that he broke away from the, from the Kansas defense and scored a touchdown. I can't say enough about Jonathan Brooks. He has really come in and taken over that starting role. And you know what? CJ Baxter came in and he did his damn thing too. Freshman getting 15 carries, got himself about 60 yards, couple receptions as well. All around, the Texas offense looked absolutely stellar. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. And the number one thing that I saw that it's got me, it really has me excited for the rest of the season. How are you gonna stop us? How? How do you how do you stop Texas? If you if you put seven, eight in the box to stop the run, guess what? You're leaving Xavier Worthy and AD Mitchell, who also had himself 10 receptions for 141 yards in the touchdown today. Double X, you can't double X and double AD, because guess what? Then you leave uh J Wit over the middle. Then you leave while he did get injured, which it did look scary, but luckily and hopefully he's going to be okay for the Sooners game. Jatavion Sanders is a freaking mismatch nightmare at tight end. I just don't, I just don't see how you beat this offense. And with Steve Sarkeesian, I mean, the dude is, 
he has been fucking flawless. Steve Sarkeesian has been flawless in his game planning. And the team has come out and execute to a an extremely high level. Look at how efficient Quinn Ewers is when he is just in rhythm and flowing with Sark's game plan. 25 of 35, man. For 325, that is ridiculous. And Quinn Ewers showed us again why he had that perfect 100 rating coming in out of high school. His arm talent is it's unlike anything i want to say unlike anything i've ever seen but obviously we've seen patrick mahomes and you know josh allen but it is very much mahomes and allen-esque it is just top tier what he can do with the football in his hands the rotation the rpms he gets on that motherfucker the the arm talent that he has the placement of his balls pause it was so incredible to watch take place on this in this game i love that what texas came out and did is asserted their damn dominance not only offensively but defensively as well now i'll be i'll be honest first off the fact that we got another backup quarterback kind of sucked in my opinion i know a lot of people were kind of excited about that everybody was oh jalen daniels out yeah that's great i was actually kind of bummed out because i think jalen daniels brings so he brings just a completely different dynamic to that kansas offense that obviously jason bean while he is a for, he's a he's a serviceable backup. He is obviously not the playmaker at quarterback that Jalen Daniels is. And to be fair, I mean, I, to be fair, a huge reason for that is because we were just flushing him out of the pocket. He had between the covers downfield and the D line rushing. I mean, Jason Bean, what would what what did y'all want him to do? I mean, he couldn't do anything. He was being harassed all day long. The Kansas O line. I'll be. Okay, it, it was a mixed day defensively as far as the D-line is concerned because we were getting Jason Bean flushed out of the pocket, but we did not have any sacks in this game, which I was quite frankly very surprised about. I thought we were going to have a, a really good day on the D-line as far as getting sacks was concerned. I could, I, I when I looked at Kansas' O-line, they were, they're good and they are a veteran O-line. But I thought that there were ways that they were they could be beat. And I saw them get beat in a lot of one-on-ones. That I was very confident that Texas's D-line was going to be able to engage in one-on-ones and win those battles. And we really... We just didn't. Right? It, and while we got pressure and we forced Jason Bean to throw the ball away all day long. And because the coverage was so good downfield. It looked... It looked a lot better defensively, but I was a little disappointed in the D-line. I'm not going to lie. Now, of course, you know, they're, the outside of the few huge runs that they got to begin the game with the speed option, which when they came out running that speed option so effectively scared the shit out of me. I'm not going to lie. But I have learned at this point, as many of you have by now, I'm sure as well, to trust PK. PK knows what he's doing. He knows how to put the team in the right position to effectively disrupt an offense, and he did that. What did he do? Instead of going to that nickel form, even though he did have Jade Barron out there on the field, he didn't do like what he did against Baylor and just completely remove Jade Barron, but he moved to a 4-3 base scheme to stop that triple option, and a lot of times substituted some nickel in there as well, got Jade Barron on the field. Kansas was rendered completely useless offensively. And again, this is five weeks in a row now where you have to say Texas's defense just rendered the offense completely useless, completely destroyed their entire game plan. Now, I know that was destroyed on the onset with the fact that Jalen Daniels uh, was not participating in the game, but you still have other, there's 10 other players on the field. You still have a solid quarterback backup right there's still plays to be made and kansas just couldn't make any plays now again <sighs> one glaring concern that i have going into the ou game is the fact that we just keep getting beat deep i don't understand what it is about our safeties and their eyes but their eyes are so horrendous at times we get beat looking in the backfield all the time and that's why all these receivers are getting over the top on us because we are peaking in the backfield and now i understand that it's probably because you know that that time clock in the defense's head kind of goes off when they realize it's been three three and a half seconds and with the with the d line that we have they're just automatically expecting that they're getting some block sheds and affecting the quarterback 
and then you sure enough you look back and the ball's being thrown over your head i i get it to a degree but that cannot be something that happens consistently because we're gonna face o-lines that are much better than kansas much better than any o-line that we face this season including alabama Oklahoma is probably going to be the best O-line that we face this entire season. Just being real, right? And we cannot afford to get our eyes caught looking in the backfield and get burned over the top because Dylan Gabriel will hit those throws. Even Jason Bean, he hit the one. Was it like a 60-yard bomb that he hit over the top where Keaton Crawford is just looking at, I don't know, he literally just watched homie run by his face and take that post over the top, gave him up in the easy touchdown. There was a point at, at that point in the game, I think it, it had become 20 to 14. And I know there was a lot of fans out there who thought, oh my God, here we go again. Because for a very split second, I got the feeling, here we go again, Texas can't close it out. But there's just something about this team the aura, the, the style, the physicality that they play with, the mentality that this team plays with. When when Texas or when Kansas brings the game 20 to 14, I kind of thought, okay, it's getting about to the point where, where Texas should really start hitting the throttle, stepping on the gas pedal, and and really pulling away in this game. And they did that. And so I was really pleased with that overall. Um so yeah, even though it was a quiet day as far as the D-line is concerned, overall defensively, we had an absolutely incredible game. We allowed less than 300 yards, I want to say, um, of offense total. Let me just pull up this chart here real quick. 136 yards receiving and 124 yards passing. So about 260 yards total given up. And in... Honestly, a lot of that was given up in garbage time, right? Like, I think Kansas had maybe 120 yards or something going into the half, something like that. And when you take away the two big speed option runs, the one fumble that Jalen Catalan absolutely blasted Jason Bean, good Lord. Look, Jason Bean probably didn't want to run the ball after that anymore. Jalen Catalan, holy Lord. When you want to talk about explosion, he hit Jason Bean and the ball had no choice but to come out. Like, I'm surprised Jason Bean's helmet didn't pop off. And we had the unfortunate bounce to Highshaw and he took it in for the touchdown, but goodness gracious. Um, yeah, overall, you know, I thought overall the entire entirety of the game, we came out and we dominated that game in every facet. You know, I, it, it was great. It's great to finally wake up on Sunday and say, damn, Texas went out there and throttled them again. And it didn't even look close. It didn't look like a competition. Even when it got close, it didn't feel close. I think at one point we had like 350 yards of offense and we only had 13 points on the board. You know, like things happened. The game was completely dominated and it was a great thing to see. Um, I'm gonna have to go back and actually watch the film, you know, to to really dive deep and get into the details of the game. But overall, there is not a more emphatic statement that we could have made headed into the Red River rivalry than the one we made against Kansas. We absolutely dominated on both sides of the ball. Again, over 650 yards of total offense. That is an insane number, and we have an established. RB1 in Jonathan Brooks, a vicious runner, right? We have an established and a growing and a flourishing Quinn Ewers heading in to the Red River Showdown. And the crazy thing and low key, like the scariest thing about this Texas team is that every week they just get better and better and better. Like we're, they're getting so much better and so much more confident. You can feel the confidence from the, from the start of the game now. It feels like the confidence is just starting to ooze out of this team. They know if they execute to the level that they're capable of, that they're going to beat the team in front of them. And I just, I get that sense more and more every single week. So yeah, 
overall, I was extremely pleased. Again, extremely pleased with the game. With the game, um, I know that there are things that could have been cleaned up, and there are things that we'll go, we'll take a look at, and kind of, like I said, we'll dive deep into that um, and see where we could get better, where we need to improve, um, and where also I think we're going to be very effective come Red River Showdown time. And going into the game against the Sooners, I could not be more excited. This is the biggest game between Texas and OU that I can remember in the last 10 to 15 years. Like, honestly, Texas is going to go in ranked number three. OU probably will be ranked inside the top 10, if not very close to the top 10. And that explosive offense and that very much improved defense is going to... It's gonna make for a hell of a clash. It, this is going to be the clash of two titans in college football. Two absolute titans, and they are on a war path right now. It is gonna be so much fun, so exciting. I cannot wait for October 7th. They cannot get here soon enough. Please subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, turn on your notifications, because remember, no matter where you look, there is no better place than Mo Better Sports for your latest football takes. I'm Mr. Mobetta, and I'm out of here. Peace.